Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. You're welcome to look through the playlists of the Master's Voice. There are multiple playlists on this channel. There are playlists about the fallen angels, playlists about giants and Nephilim. There are playlists about sin, all the sin that God says that America has committed. And in those videos in the sin series are the multiple reasons that the Lord says he will bring hard and harsh judgments against this country. The most important playlist is the Russia and China playlist. That is the playlist of prophecies that the Lord told me to lead with when I transitioned to video ministry. When I was writing the prophecies on the blog, it did not go like that. I started with prophecies of the fact that New York is going to have another disaster, a disaster that is going to be equal in magnitude or greater than 9-11 is what the Lord was leading me to understand. Those are the prophecies I led with when I first started the blog. Those are the oldest prophecies that New York will have a terrible judgment, that this nation will be traumatized again with the coming of as devastating an attack as that one was. And I've already published that message on the blog. I just need time to make it a video. But today I am making this brief video to discuss something that the Lord has brought once again to my attention. And that is what will be one of the signs of the Lord's coming. I was in the book of Luke chapter 21 and I was reading, it is very good to visit these chapters over and over again. Luke 21, Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Revelation 6. Those chapters are packed with things that if you sit before God and you go over them line by line, thoughtfully, what does this sentence mean? What is this sentence telling me to watch for? What is this sentence saying about the season that we will enter into that is indicative of the Lord's coming? Then many people will have their understanding opened, especially those who are of a certain mind and a certain expectation, thinking that Jesus will do certain things on their clock and not the clock that he has already encapsulated in this book. The verse that I will go to is... Verse 11, Luke chapter 21 and verse 11. My heart was touched when I came to this verse. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And I just looked up from reading this and I said, Lord, what is the sign? And immediately the voice came back, the Aurora Borealis. And I was taken aback. I was taken aback to have such an immediate answer because when I lifted my head and I asked, I was just thinking aloud as we are supposed to do. The Bible says that we should mutter over scripture, meaning that we should munch on it, we should chew on it, we should meditate on it. And that process will be incomplete without speaking aloud to yourself what you are reading and asking your soul, asking your thinking logical mind, asking the spirit of the Lord who is always there when we study the word, what does this mean? And immediately the answer came back, the Aurora Borealis. And the Lord said, as I just was startled, he said that this phenomenon will be seen all over the world. I don't know much about the Aurora. To this day, I've never said, okay, I'm going to set dedicated time aside and study it to become an Aurora expert. I have not done that. All I know is that the Northern Lights traditionally take place in the cold, freezing climates. It has something to do with solar flares and things like that. And to have the right mix to get those astounding lights that actually look like a harp or an accordion playing in the sky, the conditions need to be just right. Traditionally, they have been known as a stunning and startling tourist attraction that take place in places like, um, I think, Norway, in places like Finland, in places like like Alaska right here in the United States. But one thing that I know with my limited understanding is that the Northern Lights are not a regular fixture of places like New Jersey and New York. And yet in August of 2022, just last year, the Aurora appeared in both those places. So the Lord said that the Aurora Borealis will be seen out of its place all over the world. And it will be first, he has always said to me, 
indicative of the season that we are entering into in which the fallen will be manifesting themselves with great regularity. When I say fallen, I'm talking about everything running the gamut from the famous ones that call themselves aliens all the way through to this word that I learned from people who come to this channel called cryptids. I did not have that word for that. I just know them as large hairy things that are in the bush. Another one that I learned from the Lord, this creature called the Wendigo, a very tall and horrific looking wolf that looked like it died and stayed dead for two generations and then decided to come back to life. A wolf that is extremely strong with a large upper body, but the, the rib section looked like it's been eaten away by another animal. At least that's what it looked like when I decided, what is this word God has said to tell, tell the people to be careful of their children? Tell the people that the Wendigo will take their children. This is all the way back in September, um, 2021. And I thought, what on earth is a Wendigo? And I looked it up and I was sorry that I looked it up. Creatures, cryptids, things in the woods, large beings in the woods, things that walk upright and have huge footprints, all of them, the ones that play in the sea, the sirens, the beautiful women, the ones that sing, the ones that come up to make covenant covenants with men, sacrificing people, sacrificing family members to these goddesses and gods with the fish tail in the waters. God says the aurora is signaling the coming up of these things all the way to the chief at the top of the hierarchy, Satan's people, the fallen angels. People always ask, well, are fallen angels Nephilim? Absolutely no, they are not. Fallen angels are the most dangerous of all things because fallen angels, if you take away the fallen, are angels. That means that they are supernatural, immortal beings directly designed by the hand of God. And I have to tell you, when they fell, when they were cast out of heaven, the devil and his angels, none of their powers were taken away from them. The penalty they suffered is corruption, corruption. They're still able to go back to the appearance of men as all angels can do. I'm not going to go into that in depth. There is months of hard work under the fallen angels um, series. You can go and find all those videos in a playlist. So there's no need for me to retrace my steps because I am trying to finish these messages as well as put up the new messages that I have been getting from the Lord. So the Aurora is the signal for these things to become braver. It is signaling their return out of, first of all, the dimensions where they stay. I have always said that they are not living off world. Do not believe the stories for they will surely come among us and say that we have come from a far place. We have come from a galaxy, 20 light years in Zetai something. It is a lie. They are simply trans-dimensional beings. I gave the example that if I'm sitting here in my apartment and I can, I hope that doesn't wake up anyone. If I can knock on the wall, there is another apartment right next to me. There are people on the other side of the wall. If they vacuum or do any activity too loudly, like hammering or something like that, it will transfer into this apartment. Those people next door cannot say that they've come off world. They're in the same world as me, same street, just next door. That is what the fallen are like. They are completely in this world with us, but in a different realm. If this is Celestial's realm, then next door is their realm. And they possess all the powers that God has given them to move between the realms, to move between the dimensions. That is why they are excessively powerful. The Lord has said many times, and I've shared these things in snippets in the prophecies, that as we go along, people will begin to call the police. They will begin to call 911 hysterical, and they will not be saying a burglar, cat burglar, normal burglar, a guy with a gun. They will say that something that was 12 feet tall was standing in my front yard. It had claws. We shot it three times, and it ran off, but it did not die. And the police will just say, uh, yeah, okay, make sure you take your prescription meds. 
That's what they will say in the beginning. But when these calls increase and increase and increase and increase until in one night you're getting 16 or 60 different calls from around the city, they will be forced to investigate. And that is when they will start lifting plaster casts of 12, 12 inch feet off of people's front lawns. I have been saying these things for a while. The aurora will be seen all over the world. The Lord says it is the sign of his coming. Please do not misinterpret that because this is Christians. They will not marry what is said to the interpretation or the understanding. They will simply say, celestial said, when we see the aurora, then Jesus comes. No, Jesus said that we will see fearful sights and great signs from heaven. This is verse 11. Verse 11 falls within chapter 21. Chapter 21 is a chapter detailing many of the signs that will let us know we are in the season where the Lord is coming back. So this phenomenon will increase. Someone shared on the channel that these lights were seen in Colorado. As recently as last year, you see articles appearing on the internet. Oh, you can see this in Michigan. You can see this in Idaho. The conditions are not right for these things to be see, it seen. It was understood just a few short years ago, less than 10, that if you wanted to experience the Northern Lights, you had to make a plan to go to these foreign European countries or at least up to the peak, the topmost areas of Alaska so that you can see them. They were their phenomenon reserved for a certain place. But the Lord said to me as I was in my study that these will be seen all over the world as a sign. And the thing he has said the most is that this sign heralds the return of the fallen. And I will just now briefly go over a prophecy from, it is quite an old one, I think. This prophecy is from 2018, April 2015. And the title of the prophecy is UFOs and Aliens Counterfeits. And I will leave the link at the bottom. And briefly in this dream, this was a dream where the fallen came, they manifested and they were standing outside the house where I was with my siblings. And before it happened, the sky was these very vivid and interesting hues of indigo, violet, and lavender. Just a moment, please. On April 15, 2018, I dreamed a very strange dream. I saw the skies above the city I lived in turn very beautiful shades of red, indigo, and violet. It was one of the most compelling skies I'd ever seen in my life. The vividness of the colors were out of this world. And I was at home with siblings and we were watching this amazing sky through the windows. But eventually, as the sky darkened into night, I felt that we should go and sit in the very center of the house, away from all the windows. And so we did that. And in this dream, after a while, even though we were sitting in the center of the house, I, Celestial, began to see, I guess just seeing with spiritual eyes, the coming of a bright light on the front porch. And eventually, I perceived that there were um, lights on the porch. And then my brother went there and he came back breathless to say that there were amazing sights outside on the front porch. It was lights, burning lights, as if iridescence, as if you would have fire, but then color moving through the fire. And I was like, no, 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 no one should go out there. No one should go out there to where those lights are. And they were sitting there, three of them, these beautiful tongues of fire. But as I was looking from where I was, I saw inside those fires, dogs. And one of the dogs had the appearance of this, I now know it's a jackal. I just used to call it like a greyhound. But it, it, it is the jackal that is the Egyptian god Anubis. It was three dogs inside the fire. But if you don't have spiritual eyes, you wouldn't have seen them. You would have seen the appearance as tongues of fire. And imagine Christians, this is what happened at Pentecost. The tongues of fire came down. Believers, may you please beware. It is a pity to lose your life based on no discernment, no spiritual senses to know. I smell a smell, but what is the smell? Is the smell the fragrance of perfume from Jesus Christ or the stench of death from the fallen and the evil ones? I say it all the time. I see that many people cannot perceive. 
They, they can't even tell who I'm speaking for. Is she of the enemy? Is she of the Lord? Test 101. You're failing. How will you be able to read the fallen? If you need to ask me, who, who are you? Then what will you do? Will you quiz the fallen angels when they come in beautiful appearance like men and women or just in ordinary appearance, infiltrating themselves into all walks of life? Someone sitting in your office, an undead, perfectly packaged and looking just like the Meg or the Shaniqua Brown that you've known all your life. Alive but dead, a non-thing. Will you be able to ask that person, are you a human being? If the Holy Spirit is not tingling, don't talk to her, don't, and you're like, but I'm only being friendly. How we, how we disrespect God and many people don't understand. They're like, but how do we discern? You build discernment primarily through obedience and by prayer. Discernment doesn't come through these sister ladies on the internet. Oh no, I'm, I'm very sharp with things like that. You're, you're not sharp with anything like that because discernment, true discernment is not of man. True discernment is of communion with the Father. If I can just be blunt, truly being able to discern is because the spirit in you being Christ will discern. It is him who does not like the undead. It is him who does not like false prophets. It is him who will cringe back and say, this is not of God. Yes, I know that cancer was healed pretty miraculously and it's amazing, but it is not of God. It uses another power at its core. This miracle is not from the Holy Spirit. We can't even tell these things. And that is why Matthew 24 says, for at that time, false Christs and false prophets shall arise, performing great wonders with the power to deceive. People will be deceived because the word out there is that a miracle is a miracle. All miracles come from Jesus ergo. The evil mermaid power miracle is still from God. This is the level of deception that many people are at. This is the so-called discernment. The spirit is not stirred. The flesh has not been humbled so that the human, the human spirit goes down and the Holy Spirit can rise and say, no, this is not of me. Some of these things, yes, they will be like that. But the thing is that many people will be mistaking them for being of God. Because to a lot of Christians, an angel is as an angel does. If it's shiny, it's in white, it says, I come in peace. Then, then it's Jesus. Then it's Jesus. It has to be from Jesus because, you know, it's an angel. We are in peril if we don't actually know how to seek God and say, increase your spirit in me. Because the Lord's spirit can discern his own. My sheep hear my voice. They know me. Even if the Lord will be speaking through a human vessel, all the sheep will be like, that's him. That's him. And it's not an emotional discernment. Oh, it sounds holy. It is the filter of all the spiritual grass that the sheep ate. All the Bible verses. When the voice of the Lord is coming forth, it's ticking all the boxes. Yes, 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 because I read this and I know this. This is settling with me. It may be heavy, but I feel the peace of the Lord. We don't discern by flesh and we don't discern because we open our mouths and say, I, I, I'm, I have discernment. I'm, I'm usually good with that. That's just flesh talking. That is carnality. That's why it says test the spirits. You don't test the spirits by sending the spirits email and asking, who are you exactly? You test the spirits on your knees with the great tester, Jesus Christ. He will confirm this is indeed of me and then depart from me. I don't know you. Discernment is needed because the Lord says that when these skies begin to go yellow, purple, green, amazing colors, blazing skies, there will be in the end days, along with the aurora, the Lord says that people will even host viewing parties and go out to see these things in the night, unaware that maybe four, 400 feet away or 40 feet away is a thing, a creature watching and observing the group. And he said that they will get bolder and bolder. And here's the media also in the mix. You can catch the, the Northern Lights in Poughkeepsie. Watch for those headlines one day. You can, you can just catch him right by the river by your house. 
God says that they will be appearing completely out of time and space, completely against nature. But because we have the kind of complicit media that we have, it will be sold as an amazing event, a once in a lifetime. The article that I was reading actually says, once upon a time you had to travel to Alaska and Norway, but now you can catch the lights in Idaho. And, and Michigan, and I thought, since when can these lights be caught across the New Jersey transit in New Jersey? But if we're reading things and we're just thinking, this is awesome, how fortunate, now we can just get tickets and go see it, then you'll miss the fact that one of the signs of the end times is that everything will be going against the natural order. So this is anything, this is just what the, the Lord wanted us to go to know. That when we see these increasingly bleeding skies, these increasingly reddish skies, vivid hues, just sunsets. When we see sunsets out of their place, when we see weather phenomena out of its place, when we start to see these tall stacked clouds that looked like that look like plates stacked one upon another. When we start to basically see things that we've never seen before and the media keeps spinning it and saying, oh no, this is a nimbulous, nimbulous cloud. And then everyone goes, oh yeah. And you will see, you see people on the internet so ready to buy into the lie, so ready to appear wise that someone will say, I don't know, but that looks like a UFO sitting on Table Mountain to me. Oh no, 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 it's not that. It's actually the nebulo nimbus cloud. It's actually shaped like a Frisbee. Where are they getting that information from? Brand new information entered into Wikipedia 2018 or 2019 latest, but they will parrot it as if it is a long standing fact backed up by reality. This is the danger that we are in. The Bible says the time of the end will be a time that knowledge is increased. But I always say to the Lord, how can it be called knowledge when most of it is a lie? If what you know is a lie, just because you read it off the CDC website or somewhere else, is it actually knowledge if it bears no resemblance to truth? The Lord is warning us. If you've been a long time viewer of this channel, if you've even watched 10 videos to the end, just sat with discipline, watched them, or simply had them play while you were doing other things like I sometimes do, you cannot say that the clarion of warning, the voice of a trumpet shouting, come away from the fences, sit down, commune once more with the Lord, enter into your houses, my people, because the indignation is about to hit and you want to be indoors with Jesus so that it can be overpassed eventually. You won't be able to say truthfully that you never heard warning, you never heard truth, you never heard what the master was saying. Until I see you again, I'm Celestial with the master's voice. God bless you and goodbye.